Good morning. A little behind this morning on, I was trying to check my watch, <laughs> on posting at 11 like I'm trying to, but um, today, Monday, and I kind of want to talk about something that I personally have been struggling with, which is the topic of you are not a failure. The reason for this is because I feel like there's, I keep mentioning it and alluding to it, I don't really go into it, but a lot's happened in the last few months, but also a lot has happened in my life. And I keep telling my husband, I was like, I feel like my life's been like on the really fast part of the roller coaster or just the ride. Like if you're doing a big road trip, there's this usually a one stretch road that's clear. You get to go the full speed limit. Some people like to speed and it just keeps going really smooth, really quick, no stops, no pauses. And it's just like full force forward. I feel like that's what my life's been like so far because you know, you're born, you're growing up, you start school, you go through school, you went through college, and as soon as college ended is usually there's a little bit of a lull, but I kept trying to find work. That was a little bit of a lull, but I found work within a few months, and then I found another job, and then I moved to San Antonio, and then jobs and jobs and just like all of these things. As soon as I moved to San Antonio, the year after I graduated, I met my husband, we got married, that next year we were engaged and then we got married and we're in, we moved in together we did the whole thing and here we are i'm 25 years old and i feel like everything's been like somebody hit the fast forward button i need them to stop <laughs> but part of what comes with that is part of me when i was little compared myself to my parents a lot I might have brought, brought this up already, but they're like this ideal standard to me because they hit all of these milestones and from my perspective of listening to the story and seeing the final product, it sounded really easy. They met when they were 19 in college, they got married, they've been married, they had kids a few years later, they have a house, like my dad got a job out of college that he had for a really long time. And all of these things like just lined up for them, or at least that's how I see it. <laughs> I'm sure they disagree sometimes. They've had their own struggles to deal with, but it's part of me, and they've always told me not to do it, but I do it anyway, because I'm stubborn, compares myself to them, and I'm not like them. My life has been very different from theirs, so as soon as I got out of high school, I went to a four-year college. I dated multiple people, you know, figuring out which relationship's gonna work. My parents only ever dated each other. Um, I did not get married at 19, 20. I forget, 19 or 20. It might have been 19, it might have been 20. I'm not, I never remember exactly. But, <laughs> I think it was 19. Uh, they, I didn't get married at 19. I was still in college, and I was going through schooling, and I didn't want, I didn't mind dating the person I was going to marry while I was in college, but I didn't want to get married in college, because I wanted to finish school, and be that my main focus, and then do that. Surprise, surprise, I did that. <laughs> and I got married at 25. There's a lot of differences here. At my age, in their shoes, they had a lot more kind of like, I felt like they were further ahead, but that's just me. And part of what comes with that is I had this unrealistic idea of what my life would look like, which is that I would find a job, I would love my job, and that's where I would be for as long as I could be there. And I would be promoted, and I would like go up, move up the ladder, get more successful, and so on and so forth. Eventually start a family, figure out if we had enough money that I could stay home with kids, or if my husband was going to stay home with kids, and however we wanted to do that. I'm not there. And I started to question for a while if it was my fault. And then there's a lot of things that have happened that feels like it's my fault, and it's not. Part of, I guess, going through life is that it's really easy to blame yourself when everything go wrong. And the reason I think for this is you're the only thing you can control. You can't control who your boss is. You can't control what your work environment is. You can't control what your job specifically entails. You can't control how other people are going to react to you. You can control you. So if something goes wrong, it's really hard to blame everyone else and really easy to blame yourself. Well, 
I maybe I could have tried harder or maybe I, I could have done more or maybe this or maybe that or maybe I, I, I. It's not always your fault. It really, really isn't. I blamed myself in my last relationship not working out. Why? Because maybe I was too pushy. Maybe I was too much. Maybe I wasn't annoying. Maybe I expected too much of him. Maybe I expected too little of him. Maybe I pushed it too hard. Maybe it was going too fast. Maybe, 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 maybe. None of that was true. That just wasn't where I was meant to be. Because fast forward about a year or so, I met my husband. And I don't, well, I still feel like I'm annoying, but that's just a personal thing. But he's never said that. He's never said I'm too much. He's never said any of these things that I used to blame myself in my last relationship not working out. And we get along really well. And he just sent me a text this morning about things that we, we went through when we were just getting to know each other that just made it feel like we clicked. One of them is probably just one of my favorite memories that he did bring up was we were watching a video compilation of cheesecake recipes. And there was a five minute cheesecake recipe that was like supposed to be in the microwave that came up. And at the same time, we both went, ooh. <laughs> and it was just one of those moments that we were like, this might be that, that relationship. But it's so easy to blame ourselves when things go wrong. So I had my first job that I was fired. That has been very, very hard. So every other job I've ever had, I've left for various reasons. When I was a waitress, it was because I found a job that was going to pay me more. Or I didn't like the management, and I didn't see my, putting myself through difficult management like that. Um, I was leaving, I was going on an internship, I was moving cities, like, my internship came to an end, and so that's just when I left. And the job before that, it was, there was no advance in opportunity. And I felt like I was expected to do more than they were going to pay me for and what my job was supposed to be. So it's that. And then this last job. I still feel like I'm blaming myself for it not working out. Part of it is because of the way it happened. They told me that it was one thing and they told somebody else it was another thing. It came back to me eventually that they didn't think I was doing a good job. And that was hard. And for me, all I could think about was maybe I didn't give enough. Maybe, you know, I should have done more. Maybe I should have given more. Maybe I was slacking. Maybe I was this. Maybe I was that. And that's not healthy. And that's not... I'm never going to be able to ask. I'm never going to be able to confirm it. I'm never going to be able to walk into that office and say, okay, is this the reason? Is that the reason? Is there, was there something I could have done? Because that part of my life has passed. The other thing I need to remember is that I did, putting everything else aside, I remember feeling like I was burning out. My schedule wasn't a clean cut schedule, like I went into the office at this time, I caught out of this time and this was my lunch. It was a supposed to be a make your own hours job, where I was supposed to put in as much hours as I was asked, which was supposed to be the 40 hours. And then I had a list of duties that I was asked to do, and it got really hard to juggle. I felt like I was not home as often as I should have been. I felt like I couldn't do anything anymore. I felt like I was slacking on my part at the house because I didn't have time to do dishes or I stopped having time to make dinner. I stopped having time to take the cats to the bed. Little things that meant a lot to me. I felt like I wasn't having time for them. And towards the end, I made the decision that it wasn't going to be worth it if that's what the cost was going to be. And then I remembered make your own hours. So I scheduled myself in a way that I felt like I was giving enough hours to do my job, but also making time to be home and doing home stuff. So if I was going to get home late, I might make maybe a two hour lunch break so that I could come home clean or do whatever my part was that I wanted to and then go back. Evidently that might have been part of it, that miscommunication or whatever happened. 
to this day, I'm still struggling with feeling like it was my fault. Like I should have done more, like I should have put more in, like I should have, that I was being too selfish asking for time to be home with my family, which is my husband and my cats right now, but that's still mine. And I'm struggling with not blaming myself, not labeling that experience as a failure. Because if I look back at it, I learned time management. I learned what I was and wasn't willing to sacrifice for a job. Because in the long run, I think I would rather lose that job again than give up my time with my family. Because right now it's just me and my husband and our cats. But in the future we hope to have kids as well and I'm not willing to give up my time with them. I learned a little bit more about people, like trusting everyone instinctively, and like, and I talked about this before, kind of having a hard time giving this new place a clean slate. Learned to kind of not put myself out there 100% until I'm sure, until I'm comfortable, until I get to know people, instead of you know, putting my guard up a little bit, being a little more cautious, just being more aware that as much as I might have really good intentions all the time, not everybody will. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm also occasionally that person that's like, mm, I don't like this person, but that's another thing. But I learned so much about myself and about being in a workplace that I have grown from it. And as hard as it still is to not blame myself or to feel like I failed, I'm still trying to make sure that I understand that as well. So I figured I would share that because I can't possibly be the only one who's ever felt this way. And it's been a thing in the news, people have talked about it, that people have gotten so much more concerned with the bottom line than the people who work for them. They would rather burn out worker after worker after worker than hire more people, than treat them better, than offer more, because there's somebody else going to come along willing to do the job cheap and throw in themselves 100%. And the thing is, if we all just keep letting this happen and blaming ourselves and never expecting more from our workplaces, it's never going to change. So I decided that I needed to put some boundaries. I needed to make sure that I was home on time. I needed to make sure that I had time to be home. That I had to make sure that there were very clear understandings and expectations and that if I wasn't meeting them, I needed to be told. <laughs> Somehow I figured out how to do that. So my, this job that I'm doing has, it's not very clear. I have a lot of time to be home. And right now, while I'm doing trainings, I do have to go out like at 6 p.m. sometimes to do my trainings. They're only an hour, and they're not every day, and they're not forever. They're for now. And that's okay. I still have time to be home. I can still make the bed. I can do the laundry, which I need to do today. I can wash the dishes. I can do the grocery runs. And still be able to do my job well. Yes, that's a lot of hours right now because I have to get through my training. I have to read all bunch of stuff. I have to go and do stuff. But, long term, I will have more freedom to be at home. And knowing what I know now, that's very, very valuable for me. So whatever's happening in your life, whatever's going on in your head, whatever thing you're trying to figure out, try to put yourself in someone else's shoes looking at you. If this was happening to your best friend or to your sibling, your parent, your significant other, what would you want to tell them? Would you want them to feel the way that you're feeling? Try to be a little bit more objective about it. And most of all, don't just blame yourself. Figure out, did you do your best? If you did your best and that wasn't good enough for somebody else, that's okay. Because your best is enough. And maybe it just wasn't meant to be there. And if you can, and you feel up to it, 
share your story in the comments. What was that moment that you felt like I got a call in the middle of this and that just threw me off? <laughs> but share so that we all know that we all go through it because I know it's not just me. And you don't have to do it in the comments. You can do it with your friends, with your family. Talk to somebody because more than likely we've all had that at least one experience where we feel like it's our fault. Thanks for listening.